hands up to the Lord and just love on him. Lord, we thank you. Lord, as the scripture said, let the lifting up our hands be as evening sacrifice. God, and our praise be as the incense that rises, Lord. And our prayer, oh God, to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Blessing and honor and glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. Amen. Welcome tonight. Just turn around and greet one another in the house of the Lord. Yeah, okay. All right. It's it's okay. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Here we are ready in February. Believe that? Wow. Praise the Lord. Um the announcements. Oh, I don't have any time. All right, announcements. So we're two weeks away from our Valentine weekend with Shanti and Jeff Feldhahn. If you have not gotten the email registration, please see Pastor Sherry and Pastor Bethany today. The child care for ages five and under, raise your hand and the usher to bring you a flyer. Who needs, who needs uh, child care? All right, we got a hand right here. Okay, bring this young lady a flyer here. Okay, ushers are not, yeah, they're doing a good job. All right, look at, we, we got your mark, young lady. So, <laughs> Eddie James will be with us on February the 20th, 6 p.m. It's going to be fantastic. Amen. Your ticket in is a visitor. Okay, other than that's $100 a head. All right, you bring somebody, it's free. I'm joking, obviously. Uh, Cornerstone men are going to the men, River Men's Conference August 31st through September 3rd. Save the date. We're planning to fly, so you will receive a registration email soon. It's going to be it's going to be great. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I, I just encourage you. It's already you know it's what how many two uh, eight, it's six months away. So we just make plans to go. It's going to be a great time. Amen. And. Uh, be great you won't if you've never been in a meeting like that you'll uh, you'll, you'll you'll enjoy it you will enjoy it a lot just, just take my word for it all right <laughs> amen amen hallelujah our ushers are going to come and just receive the offering this evening and uh, we just want to worship God offering time is really a time of worship extended worship as we we bring to the Lord something of worth to worship him with we can, we can say that, that you know, that singing a song is, is worship because we're, we're, our heart is in it. We're giving it to the Lord. But also, there's an act of worship where we bring God something that, that costs us something. Amen? And uh, we do that with a, with a heart of worship. Uh, I have, a, I have a, a, a slide I want Brenda to put up there just to show you, show you the churches we're building in Tanzania. And... Uh, Here's the churches that are built. We've completed uh, Duga Maferoni, Marungu, Garizim Wadzi, Kasira, and Kichingani. Those are, those are finished. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. In process, these are at different stages of construction. Indeoya, Kis Kisasora, and Zingibari. Those are at different stages of construction. 
Uh, Indeoya is probably 85% uh, built. The other two are about uh, probably about 60%. And then I got up there coming soon, Tongoni and, and Bamba. I'm sure you don't know where those villages are, but, but nevertheless, they're, they're there. Uh, I want to read to you, if I, can, if I can find it here very quickly, if I can find this, what, uh, what Pastor Jotham sent me regarding the building of these churches and the effect that it's having in that part of the world. Give me just a second here to pull this up. He, uh, hallelujah. Not seeing it immediately. But anyway, he's saying to me that the that that church growth in that area has 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 sparked because of the new churches that are being built, and uh, it's it's just awesome. Hallelujah. I thought it was immediately right here, but it's not. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay. He says, uh, he said, praise the Lord for the ministry calling has called us and united us for the kingdom, kingdom work. Your support is great. He said, the Muslims are also very surprised to see the Christians who are worshiping on a small, what he calls hay churches, hay houses, in other words, made of straw and, and sticks, now have church buildings. Amen. Hallelujah. So, but anyway, there's another message here. I'm not seeing it immediately. He's talking about how that, how that is sparking church growth. Here, here it is. I've just found it. He said, thank you so much for the great support. Tanga, Tanga is the main city in that particular region, is being shaken with church growth. May God richly bless you. Amen. So these are churches that are being built. Our goal, my goal, our goal is to build 20 of these before we pay off this property. Amen. We're in a race against the Lord. I wonder if he can pay this off before we build 20 or not. He can do it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, you know, what we're doing tonight is bringing to God a, a worship, bring to God an offering, possibly bring your tithes. And uh, w with that, we worship God. And, you know, th I, th I think the Scripture says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he said, And all these other things will be added to you. What things is he talking about? Well, if you read the whole chapter, he's talking about the things that the Gentiles are seeking. The Gentiles are seeking for clothing, seeking for housing, seeking for, 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 for finances, right? But he tells us we're to seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things to be added to us. And the way I see that is this real simple. Number one, we commit our life to Jesus. Amen. We did that when we got born again, when we got saved. And then after that, we, we fellowship with the Lord in, in our devotions, in our devotional time. We get to know Him. We pour our heart out to Him. He pours His, His Spirit out upon us. And we come to know the Lord deeper and greater. And when we do that, all of a sudden there's a transformation that takes place in our life where we begin to be concerned about what concerns Him. We begin to feel the burden of what burdens Him and understand the need of, uh, of, of, of the kingdom of God. And so, so all of a sudden when that happens, our financial priorities begin to shift because I lose sight of my need, I lose sight of what I need, and my, my, my priority becomes the kingdom of God. I want to see the kingdom of God advanced. I want to see churches built. I want to see souls saved. Amen? Amen. And, and I see that as the greatest, one of the greatest motivations for giving. It's not necessarily that I'm giving and believe that if I put this in the offering plate, if I give a 10, I'll get 100 back. You know, I'm, I mean, I believe in sowing and reaping, and I believe that when we release our faith with our offering, I believe it's coming back multiplied. Don't get me wrong. But I think what really moves us is the expansion of the kingdom of God. Amen. And, 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 and of course, if, if we give, and, and God does, God's the giver anyway, amen. We give, it, and more is coming back, and so we, we just continually increase, and it empowers us to do more. And I told, I've said it here before that I'm, in my own personal life, I measure prosperity by my ability to give. That's how I measure my prosperity. I'm giving more now than I gave last year. I'm giving a lot more than I gave five years ago. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So there's been an increase in my life. How am I going to measure that increase? 
I'm measuring it by what I'm able to do, what I'm able to give. And so it is with this church. We measure, we measure the blessing. We want to measure the blessing. Measure the increase. Then look at the churches we're building. Look at the things we're able to do. The, you, know, you know about it, 45 wells we've done in Zambia, and, uh, and et cetera. So that's what we measure it by. God empowers us to prosper so that we can be a blessing. Amen? It affects and enriches our life. Hallelujah. But even, man, the thrill of being able to do something of significance for the kingdom of God. That's, that's important. Amen. Let's all stand up together. Father, you have blessed us. We, we acknowledge the blessing of the Lord that makes rich. We give you praise for that tonight. Lord, I thank you for the people tonight that you have uh, given them a giving heart. You've stirred up their heart to give. And I thank you, Lord, that as we worship you with our giving, I thank you that you inhabit our praise. You inhabit our worship. So tonight we honor you, Lord, with our giving tonight. Thank you for the opportunity. In the name of Jesus, and amen. Amen. Let us give to the Lord. Bibles, let's uh, open our Bibles to the book of, book of Galatians chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 3. And here is a verse that's been a theme for quite a while, but we're just going to begin here again, look into some other aspects of this. One of the things the Lord recently, the Lord's challenged me with in my heart, I, was, uh, I, felt, I felt led of the Lord, go back to the book of Genesis and, and specifically began to study in great, great detail the life of Abraham, life and experience of Isaac, life and experience of Jacob, and all the way through Joseph. And uh, from Genesis chapter 1 through Genesis, I think what's it, chapter 50. And so I went back and I read, I read the whole book in NIV, then I turned around and now I'm in the process of reading it and studying it again in another translation. And I'm going, I'm just, as it were, I'm going with a, micros with a, with a magnifying glass. I said a microscope, that would be detailed. Wouldn't it? With a magnifying glass. And, uh, and just looking at those men of God and what God did in their life, because there's a scripture here that, that you know well, that really in, in my, my own personal spiritual life and progress was one of the first verses that just radically, radically changed my life. When I came to understand this verse, and, and be frank with you, you know, I understood it. And sometimes understanding the Bible is like, uh, you know, different layers of an onion. You understand it, then, man, there's a deeper depth to it. And then you pull back, and there's a deeper depth to it, and there's a deeper depth to it. Somebody said the Scripture is like a diamond. Every angle you look at it, it sparkles. Amen. No sparkles, just alike. And so the Word of God is rich, and uh, we, we think we know it. You might even be able to quote it. But there's some stuff in there, man, that we still hadn't seen yet. Amen. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, it said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Curses everyone who hangs on a tree, that or in order to that. So why did Jesus, verse 13 again, why did Jesus redeem us from the curse by becoming a curse for us? Well, obviously we could say, well, he redeemed me from the curse of the law so that when I die I don't have to go to hell. We thank God we don't have to go to hell. Amen. We, we could even say he redeemed me from the curse of the law so that when I die, I go to heaven. Thank God we're going to heaven. Amen. But, uh, but then he gives us the reason he did that, tell, verse 14, that or in order that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. So that's why he did it. Now, so he's not talking necessarily here about, about streets of gold in, in heaven. He's talking about our life here on this earth and something that comes on us in our life on this earth that enriches and empowers us 
to live a victorious life. And so he said, the blessing of Abraham. And so, I mean, it's pretty logical to me that, that if it's the blessing of Abraham, I ought to go back and study Abraham. Amen? I ought to go back and study Abraham and look at his life in detail because here's the thing the Lord challenged me with is, yes, we have the blessing, but I have to learn how to live a blessed life. I have to learn how to live a blessed life. I have to learn how to think. I have to learn how to talk. I have to learn how to act. What, 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 how do I access the fullness of this blessing that God has graced me with? And I want to know that. With all those keys and secrets are found in the Bible. Amen. And so we got to dig them out. And it's really, really good stuff. So he says that he, in order that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, if we were to take the time and read this whole chapter, we're not going to, you'd find that several occasions in this chapter of Galatians 3, he refers to Abraham. Now, if we go back here to Romans, Romans chapter 4, I'm not going to read it. Go back to Romans chapter 4, Paul talking about being justified by faith. He talks about who in Romans chapter 4? He talks about Abraham. Amen. He spends extensively talking about the fact that Abraham, you know, that God made Abraham righteous by faith. That's Romans chapter 4. The whole point is, is that there are New Testament, New Covenant truth that's found in and through the life of Abraham. And the covenant that God made with Abraham really is, uh, is the covenant that gave birth to the New Covenant. You could, you could almost say it's the same covenant. One just gave, gave birth to the, to the other. Amen? I mean, it was in Christ Jesus that the Gentiles, now, unless I don't know your, your background, all of us are Gentiles by physical birth, right? M meaning what? Meaning we weren't Jews. We weren't of the physical lineage of Abraham. Amen? But really a Gentile means one who has no covenant. That's what a really Gentile is, one who has no covenant with God. And so we had no covenant with God. And so God, uh, we had no relationship with God. Except God loved us, and he gave his son Jesus to bring us in. Amen. And he brought us in into a, you, you, can, you, can, describe, you can describe our connection to God in, that I know of in three ways. One is covenant. I have a covenant with God. I'm in a covenant relationship with God. So I understand my relationship in the terms of covenant. It's a blood covenant. The Bible speaks about the blood of Jesus as the blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen. The new covenant. This cup. Take this cup. Drink it. It's the cup of the, is the new cup of is the New Testament in my blood, Jesus said. Amen. So we drink it, which is, is communion. We have a covenant relationship with God. We can talk about our relationship with God in the terms of kingdom. I'm in the kingdom. Jesus is king. Amen. We're in the kingdom of God. And there are kingdom principles that we live by. And so I'm a, I'm a king in the kingdom. I could talk about my relationship with God in terms of family. God is my father. Amen. In Galatians 4, it said, He sent the spirit of his son into my heart, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, no more servants, but what? Sons. So we're sons of God. So, but here in the scripture, he's talking about our relationship with God in terms of covenant. And so in the terms of the covenant, I am in covenant with relation with God in Christ. Amen. In Christ, I'm in this covenant relationship with God. And being in covenant with God, then I am an heir. I am a full, legal, rightful heir of the blessing. Amen. Of the blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And really, if you look at it that way, and you study the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis in that way, obviously you can study it from different angles, but if you can study the book of Genesis looking at it as a history of the blessing. It begins in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, when God created Adam and Eve, the very first man and first woman the bible says he, he created them in his image and likeness and he blessed them it was at, uh, genesis chapter 1 verse 28 i believe he blessed them and said and said to them and yeah blessed them and said to them be fruitful and multiply but really that's not the first reference to blessing in genesis chapter 1 
the first reference to blessing in Genesis chapter 1 has to do with the fish in the air and the, and the, and the, fish, in the uh, fish in the sea and the birds in the air. <laughs> Amen. Had it backwards. Amen. Fish don't fly. Birds don't swim. So, amen. But anyway, he blessed the birds and he blessed the fish. And the effect of that was an abundance of fish. They, the fish filled the sea. And the fish and the, and, the, and the birds filled the air. So if you simply take the word itself, blessing, you could talk about, you know, talk about just what people think about it. It's just to feel good. I felt good. I had a tingle. I had a, you know, I felt the Lord. Yeah, okay. But really, biblically, the blessing is power. The blessing is power for fruitfulness. It's power for multiplication. It's power to fill the earth. It's power to subdue it. It's power to have dominion. Adam is supposed to be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. How's he going to do that? God puts power on him. And that power is called the blessing. And now, when God gave that blessing to Adam, Adam is the head of the old creation. He's the head of the old creation. When God gave that to Adam, he intended every human being would have that blessing. We would inherit that from Adam, our forefather. Everything Adam got, we were going to get. That's the way it was designed. And it was designed for our benefit. He said, the problem is, Adam messed it up. Adam sinned, and so instead of a blessing, we inherited a curse. Amen. And, and, and the moment you were born, you're born in this cursed earth, this cursed world, and you didn't deserve, you know, in that sense, you didn't deserve all the bad stuff that came your way. Hello. Come on. Say amen. Amen. So it is in reverse. You know, the new creation. Jesus goes to the cross and dies and sheds his blood, redeems us from the curse, and we come into Christ, and so there's a lot of good stuff, really good stuff I don't deserve that comes into my life. Amen. If I had to suffer the bad stuff just because I was under Adam, didn't do nothing to get it or deserve it, it just came to me because I was under Adam, then I get all the good stuff just because I'm in Jesus. Amen. Just because I'm in Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, say amen. So you study the history of that through the whole Bible. And so it, so it starts with Adam, and then, then it, there's a break in that, and then you basically pick up with that with Abraham. And in Abraham, God again introduces the, the blessing into the human race with an intention. Through a Abraham, he's going to bring Christ in the world, and then through Christ, every family on earth can have that. Amen. And it's full, full, big, and awesome and glorious uh, effect. Hallelujah. Amen. Full, glorious, and awesome effect. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, study in studying, I'm going to give you a couple things here that just before I move on. Uh, just looking at, at the blessing. Uh, turn in your Bible. And, and I'm going to give you a verse of Scripture here. Uh, turn in your Bible to Genesis chapter, uh, let's look at Genesis chapter 26. I'll go, I'm going to go frontwards and backwards for a few minutes. Go to Genesis chapter 26. I'm just going to point out a few, few, few little nuggets, okay, as we just look to understand the blessing. Now, I know, I know everybody here, you say, I already understand that. Cool. I'm hungry to know more, okay. Hallelujah. Now, I honestly feel, sense, and I feel a surge coming on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Genesis chapter 26, this is talking about uh, Isaac, who is the son of Abraham, right? He is the son of Abraham. There are two things in Genesis 26 that I want to point out to you about Isaac. Now, beginning with verse 12, it said, Now, Isaac sowed, <coughs> excuse me, Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, right? Now I realize that a lot of a lot of a lot of preachers like to talk about that in the, in the sense of getting people to give money because you're going to reap a hundredfold. I don't doubt that, but that's not what that scripture is talking about. He was a farmer. That was what he did. He sowed seed. He he planted a garden. He planted corn. He planted wheat. He planted whatever he planted. Are you with me? Amen. So that was what he was employed with. He's talking about his employment, and and the aspect here is is that there's a famine on, 
And the miracle is, is that he sowed in that land. And not only did he get his seed back, but he got a hundred times as much back. And it had nothing to do with anything except there was something on Isaac. There was something on Isaac that wasn't on everybody else. Because everybody else didn't put any seed in the ground, or if they did, they lost it because it dried up and blowed away. But Isaac's got something on him empowering him that when he put seed in the ground, God came on that seed, and God made it grow, and God made it multiply. And so he had a miracle harvest in the middle of a famine. Amen. In the same year, a hundredfold, and the Lord did what? Blessed him. Now go to the next verse. Next verse says, and the Lord blessed him, and the man, oh, that's New King James. Let's put up, let's put up, I think this is NIV that I've got right here. Put up NIV. Man, all these verses are awesome. The man began to prosper, continued prospering, until he became very prosperous. All right, here, I like this one. The man became rich. Now, this is in the Bible, okay? R-I-C-H, that is not a cuss word. Amen? And so if you're one of the people that go around hating rich people, you'll probably never have any money. Rich people are not the problem. Rich people are not your problem. <laughs> you may not have any money, but the rich man is not your problem. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's not your problem. You know, I mean, it's not people, you know, you have a humanistic view. You have a humanistic view of the world. That is, the world's like a, like a pie. You know, you got your nice, I don't know, pumpkin pie, right? It's Thanksgiving, you're getting ready to eat some pumpkin pie, and I take me, a, I take a slice, of, take up a whole quarter of that pie, and I take it, right? Well, automatically, you realize I took a quarter of the pie, and so I probably took part of your pie, right? There's not enough pie for everybody now, because I took too much pie. And so that's the way people look at rich people. He took his pie and my pie. He stole my piece. And so you're mad. The guy pulls up in a Mercedes and you're mad at him. Because he took my pie. He didn't take your pie. That view of the world being like a pie is a humanistic view of the world. That's a limited view. God's view is that when God created this world, he created it with an unlimited supply. It's an unlimited supply. And I can go out there and be a multi billionaire, but it doesn't take away from you being a multi billionaire. There's too much in the world. Listen, you are not a mistake. You did not arrive on this earth by mistake. You did not surprise God. God knew you were coming, and God invested great wealth in this earth just for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So Isaac, the son of Abraham, stop. why is Isaac important? Isaac is, is important because the blessing on him is his daddy's blessing. It's the blessing of Abraham. And when it came in its purest form in the first generation, this is what it did to it. Hallelujah. Well, man, I'll, it don't take me long to skip to Galatians 3. Come on now. He redeemed me, and he put that same blessing on me. Hallelujah. Come on now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the man became rich. How did he get rich? It wasn't because he was smarter than everybody. It wasn't because he worked harder than everybody. It wasn't any of that. He got rich because something was on him. Something was on him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. Put that up in the, I don't know, put that up in the New American Standard. Let's just look at it in a couple angles here. New America State, N-A-S-B. There it is. And the man became rich and continued, that's the one, and the man became rich and continued to grow richer until he became very wealthy. Hallelujah. Now, what I'm not going to put up here is the, is the Hebrew text. But I'm going to just tell you something. I, I, I got an interlinear Bible, interlinear uh, Hebrew Bible. That's kind of new for me. But I got to looking at that thing, and here's what I discovered. When you look at the Hebrew text, this is repeated two times. The exact same words are repeated twice in that verse. And, and it says, and there's no comma between them. There's no conjunction between them. But it, it, it says this. I'm going to read it. In the Hebrew language, a phrase is used in the text two times with no separation or conjunction between them. And it's, it's, it says this, more and more, more and more. More and more, more and more. Wait a minute. Who said that? God. 
See, the blessing is God saying something over you. He's speaking something over you. So what is God speaking over you? More and more, more and more. More and more, more and more. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. More and more, more and more. So what's at work in Isaac's life? More and more and more and more. So he became rich, continued to get richer. Why? More and more and more and more until he became very wealthy. Hallelujah. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what it was, working in every area of his life. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now drop down to verse 29. Drop down to verse 29. Now these are the, these are the heathen people. These are really Philistines. And this is their observation of Isaac. And the Bible says that in the, they're, trying, they're, they're making a covenant with Isaac. He said that you will do us no harm just as we have not touched you and you have done and have done to you nothing but good and have sent you away in peace. Now this is what they say. You, that's a singular pronoun. You are now the blessed of the Lord. You are now the blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what that means? That mean, you see, in their culture, you study the history, in their culture, in their gods that they worship, everybody used the word blessed. And so somebody walks up to the, I don't know, the tree god. <laughs> you know, walks up to the tree god. And there is the priest of the tree god. And the tree god says, may the tree bless you. May you have the blessing of the tree. All right? Well, they see the effect of that, which is zero. <laughs> zero. <laughs> Amen. And they go, believe it, I got the blessing of the tree. Woo-hoo. Got the blessing of, I'm making that up, you know that, right? You know, I mean, I can, you can name God's Baal, you know, the, the prophet of Baal. And say, Baal bless you. You'll be blessed by Baal. Or, or opposite, you'll be cursed by Baal. Right? And so these heathen people, they saw the effect of that. But now they, they meet a man who has the blessing of El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He has the blessing of El Shaddai. And they marked him and said, Truly, you are the blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are the blessed of the Lord. Amen. Now, stop right there. That is a, that is a title that's on Isaac's life. He is the blessed of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, who are you? The blessed of the Lord. Because when you get, listen, when you get into Galatians chapter 3, what becomes clear is that the blessing was for Abraham and his seed. And the seed is singular. Singularly, the seed of Abraham is the blessed of the Lord. He's talking there, obviously, about Jesus, right? But then you get to verse 20, 29, Galatians 3, 29. Put it up there. Galatians 3, 29. He says very clearly, he said, if you be Christ, if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's singular seed. If you belong to Christ, then you're Abraham's seed, singular. Singular means what? Means, means what? You are in the exact same place as Isaac. Abraham had one son that was blessed. Ishmael didn't get it. The sons of Keturah didn't get it. Isaac got the whole load. He got the full measure of the blessing. Hallelujah. As if he were the only one. And he was the only one. God sees you as the only one. You are the only one. We're not dividing a million dollars among 10 million people. Hello. You're not taking the blessing and cutting it up into little pieces so that everybody on earth can have a piece. No. God sees you as one. You are the blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. I am an ex Listen, I can prove it to you scripturally. I just did part of it. I can prove it. I'm in exactly the same position as Isaac. I'm in exactly the same position as Isaac. Amen? Hallelujah. Put up Galatians 4.28. Galatians 4.28. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, our children of promise. 
I'm exactly in the same position as Isaac. Hallelujah. Glory. You are, put up the Amplified. Go back with me to Galatians, Genesis chapter 26, 20, 29, and put up the Amplified version. Galatians, excuse, not Galatians, Genesis 26, verse 29. Amplified. You are now the blessed or favored of the Lord. Wow, wow, wow. That's who I am. Amen. Say, I'm blessed. Come on, say it loud. Say, I'm blessed. I am favored of the Lord. Say, there's something on my life that's making me prosper. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Glory. Can y'all take another, some more? All right, we're just looking at the meaning of blessing here. Go with me to Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. Now this is this is really interesting because this comes this comes out of out of the scripture and the Hebrew wording. I understand. I don't know. Whole, frankly, don't know a whole lot about Hebrew except what I read. I've studied Greek quite a bit extensively, really, but Hebrew not so much. But I'm starting to do it more and more. But what I understand is is that in the Hebrew in the Hebrew language that many of the, of the letters, the words, are pictorial. In other words, there are pictures there. And that you could, I've heard it said that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the whole story of, of, of redemption is there in, in, in the letters. If you understood the Hebrew and could look at the pictorial meaning of the letters, you'd find the whole story of redemption is in the first four or five words of Genesis chapter 1. And it's it you you, you can find you, you can find some of them on, on YouTube. You can find these Hebrew guys who just dug into that and, and study that out, and it's it's fascinating, really. And it just again it shows the the incredible, uh, you know, wisdom of God. Amen. The incredible, incredible wisdom of God. But um, in Genesis chapter 24, Genesis chapter 24. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 24, beginning, beginning with verse 9. And this is, uh, this is the servant of Abraham, and he's about to go down and find Isaac a wife. All right? And I just want to read this, okay? And, and beginning with verse 9. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning that matter. That is, that he would not take a, a wife of the daughters of Canaan, for Isaac, and but he would go down, you know, to Canaan and, and, and find a wife. And verse 10, and, and the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia into the city of Nahor. Verse 11, he made his camels to kneel down without or outside the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women do, do go out to draw water. Now stop right there. You got a picture here in verse 11, and I want you to see the picture. The picture is, is the camels are kneeling. The camels are kneeling outside the city, but they're kneeling beside of a well of water. The camels are kneeling beside a well of water. Now, the picture here you have to see is that everywhere you stood there, everywhere as far as your eye could see is, de is bleak desert bleak desert except this one spot there's a well and that Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about that well but it's very possibly living water spring of water you know from that well so in the middle of this bleak desert there's a well and of course out of that well there's water and there, out of that water there's what there's life amen there's life that, that's a picture there and if you take the word blessing the word blessing in the Hebrew and you were to look at the, it in pictorial form, there are three words that come out of that word, blessing. It's the word knee, it's the word blessing, and it's the word water place. In other words, inside of the Hebrew word blessing, there are, there are these pictorial words of knee, blessing, and water place. The, the scholar says the, 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 what, the hypho meaning of blessing means to make camels kneel. Now, he's giving you a picture. He's giving you a picture of a desert, bleak desert, 
in the middle of the desert, there's this, there's this living water. There's this living water. And that's, that, that is, that's the blessing. The whole earth is cursed. The whole earth is cursed. Everybody's struggling. Everybody's trying to stay alive. But in the middle of, of this desert called earth, there's this living water bubbling up. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's the blessing. And that's what God has put in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, and so when you look at it like that, if people are going to get anything, if people are going to get anywhere, they're going to have to connect with somebody. They're going to have to find somebody or some place where the blessing is flowing. Hallelujah. And in that water, there is power, there is anointing, there is blessing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But that well of water is a description of your life. That's who you are. Amen. Glory to God. Think about this. Think about Abraham being blessed. And think about the people that Abraham connected with. Think about that. Okay, here's Abraham. Who's he connected with? Who is actually having conversation with Abraham in the Bible? Who's he having? Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Who's he having conversation with? He's having conversation with Abimelech, king of the Philistines. He's having conversation with Bera, king of Sodom. He's having conversation with Melchizedek, priest of the Most High God. These are kings, and they've realized this guy has got something on him. He's got something on him, and if our kingdom, if our kingdom is going to thrive, we got to hook up with Abraham. Hallelujah. There's a desert around. We struggle to live. We struggle to survive. But that guy has got something on him. Hallelujah. And if we can connect with what he's got, we can live and prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. I mean, Abraham, you know, there's no doubt Abraham is a friendly guy, loving guy. He talks to the servants and talks to whoever. But in the Bible, the only people you see Abraham talking to are kings. What's that mean? That means the blessing has raised his prestige and his value. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Now, you can study that. And we, man, it's, 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 man, the more I study, the more I see. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you connect that with Galatians. That when God said, I'm going to give you the blessing of Abraham, we look at that and say, oh, yeah, he gave me the blessing of Abraham. Okay. What's next? I need something deeper. No. You just missed it. You missed the gold mine. Come on, you missed the gold mine. <laughs> you, you missed the gold mine. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. We live in and out of that blessing. In, live in and out of that blessing. Something good is about to happen in my life. Something good is about to happen in your life. Hallelujah. You know, I used to, you know, younger, when Oral Roberts was alive, I'd hear him say that, you know. He said, something good is about to happen in your life. And I think, well, how does he know that? Amen. <laughs> I think, well, he's just saying that. That's just a TV saying, you know. He's probably just trying to raise a big offering. <laughs> now, listen, I was wrong. Okay, he was a man of God, right? I'm just saying what was in my head. I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why I was supposed to expect something good to happen in my life. Amen? But now that I start understanding this, every morning I get up, I've got an expectation. Something good is about to happen in my life. It's good coming my way. Hallelujah. Come on now. There's something moving in my life. There's something bubbling in my life. I got a power on me. I got a power in me. I got a power flowing through me, and it's called the blessing. It's called the blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands and shout. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up, please. Glory to God. Come on. Come on, let's just lift our hands and thank God. And thank God for the blessing of the Lord that's resting upon us, that's richly upon us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that I have your blessing. I have your favor. I have your favor. Oh, ho, ho. Yes, Lord, I have your favor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Ho, ho, ho. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ho, ho, ho. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. More and more. More and more. More and more. More and more. Hallelujah. More and more. More and more. <laughs> more and more. Hallelujah. I didn't say that. He said that. God said that. <laughs> more and more. Increase. Increase. Hallelujah. Increase. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. So, Father, I thank you today that you've given us the Holy Spirit as our teacher, as our guide, not only to understand logically the truth, but we understand it from, the, from your revelation. Lord God, we receive it tonight. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And, Father, I just declare that blessing over every person in this building. Lord, you planned it from thousands of years ago. You had them in your mind that this blessing would be operative in their life. Lord, influencing, changing their world. Lord, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, where there's things that's gone wrong, I thank you, God, there's going to be a reversal. There's going to be a reversal. Hallelujah. Lord, your word said you turn, you turn ashes to beauty. You give us beauty for our ashes. Hallelujah. You give us the oil of joy for our mourning. Lord God, you put us, you give us, a, you give us, oh Lord God, you give us a, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lord, there's going to be a reversal in every, every area. Lord, in every area, in the name of Jesus. I declare reversal in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Man, I feel that right now. Some of you right now have been going through some difficult places. Difficult places. But God said there's going to be a reversal. God said there's going to be a reversal. There's going to be a change. There's going to be a change. Hallelujah. Going to be a change. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I feel like I should pray for a couple people. Praise the Lord. Who wants special prayer? Run up here right now. Come up here, Teresa. Come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anybody want prayer? Come quick. Come quick. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Teresa, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Sister, what I see, I see the Lord. I see the Lord guiding your steps. Decisions you're about to make, directions you're about to take. The Lord said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct your steps. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for the touch of heaven. The blessing of the Lord that rests upon her tonight. 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory.